Hey everybody and welcome to the X-Wing Kessel Run event at the Covenant Store in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm Steven and I'm joined by... None other than Zach. Zach, that's right. The uh, One of the biggest Star Wars fans this side of the Rio Grande. <laughs> um, we're pulling up uh, the forces on the screen right now. We have Cast Scarlet in the Fire Spray 31 with a heavy laser cannon on it. Um, that's a, a favored weapon for the ship there. Mercenary co-pilot also... Um, also an excellent thing to have on there with that cannon. And soon Tier Fell is going to make an appearance in the new TIE Interceptor Wave 2 ship with a stealth device on him. Which is pretty awesome. One of my favorites coming down the pipe. And Daredevil. Ooh. That's really nice. Finally, we have an Avenger Squadron pilot, just a kind of a basic TIE Interceptor. And... <clears throat> On the other side, we have Lando flying the YT-1300, not the Falcon exactly, um, with but Nian close. Num as his, uh, I guess, co-pilot there, which is a hilarious pairing. And then, oh, it is the Millennium Falcon, excuse me. So it does gain uh, the evade. Is it the evade action? or the? That's the evade action, yeah? Yep. When you're dealt a damage card, it's Chewy. Hello. You're in the ship, too. And then Arvel Crind, or Crinid, uh, the A-wing pilot there with some homing missiles. It's going to be uh, nice to see. These are brand new upgrades. <coughs> then a green squadron pilot in the A-wing. Just a, you know, normal dude. But he's pushing the limit. So Look how close uh, he is in that art thing. Yeah, that's a big deal. He's definitely pushing the limit. So there we have it. You guys can see uh, what's going on with the cards on the uh, board here. And, and now we have Michael on the right, right? I believe Michael is on the right and uh, Eric is on the left. <clears throat> so we're going to take a look at what they're doing. Looks like Michael has started with a TIE Interceptor, and he's going for a little boost right off the bat. Uh, now, these are the new ships, right? These are This is Wave 2. So the Kessel Run, uh, the finals were played uh, with Wave 2 ships only, and uh, it was a pre-configured way of uh, constructing those forces. So Fantasy Flight had a sheet with everything that had to be included in these forces, and now they're playing. There we have the first Slave 1 move. Oh, excuse me, it's not Slave 1. Uh, the first ship that we all know is Slave 1. We'll call it Slave 1. What is it, uh, what is it officially called? The Fire Spray. Okay, I can remember Fire Spray. Um, and we've got some asteroids too, which is going to be a big deal. This is the first time dealing with asteroids uh, with these big ships. And you'll see throughout the game that I imagine it's going to create some difficulty um, not quite knowing kind of how big and, uh, and crazy these ships are, um, how often they're going to run into asteroids. Yeah, because you know technically neither of these players has played with a big base ship. Right. Um, now it's really cool to see see how far up that tie interceptor already is. Yeah. Um, absolutely something that is not you can't do it um, unless you have a tie interceptor. Right. Uh, or any Wave 2 model. So that's really cool to see, and I'm really excited to see how that plays out. Because you know, normally a lot of the action happens mid-board uh, to start, and I've got a feeling that's not going to be the case. Yeah, the boost is a, is a big deal, actually. It's a nice little mechanic, and it can really do a lot to get ships in a position to fire at range 1 or to get out of trouble, um, any number of those things. So Michael moves up his other tie interceptor. Looks like he is approaching the left side of the board. He's going to try to take Slave and uh, turn him around. He's matching off pretty head-to-head uh, -head with that uh, Falcon over there. So how did Lando and Nia Num get in the Millennium Falcon without Han? Well, I mean, that actually happens in Episode Six. Oh, beautiful. Um, when they have the Death Star 2 run. That's right, that's right. Uh, yeah, and they're flying through the Death Star and it's all blown up and stuff. So um, that's actually, that actually happened. Um, well, then where's Kath Scarlet in all this? He's in a book somewhere. Ah, uh, Expanded Universe. And that's a big step that Fantasy Flight has basically told us, hey, we're, we're willing to go to Expanded Universe for pilots and, who knows, ships. Absolutely. Well, sets. I mean, you know, Soon Tier, who's one of the Thai advanced pilots on the board, um, he's heavily talked about and in the Expanded Universe and uh, his son as well. So I'm really excited to see if they... I love his son in the book. So I'm excited to see if they carry that on. Nice. So the Falcon is uh, is approaching the A-Wings there. They're, they're kind of nose-to-nose. -nose. We'll see them split off, I'm sure, here in just a second. But look at that model. Very beautiful. Um, that that may as well be from the movies right there. Just get right down to it. Looks great. And then we're uh, going over to the A-Wings. Looks like they're probably going to be doing some moves here in a sec. Now, this is a pretty crazy start because you have the A-Wings that are on the left of the board. And the fa or I guess it's Falcon, yeah. On the right. And uh, the A-Wings kind of go up a little and to the right. And then the Falcon swings to the left, and they're kind of facing each other. 
So there the A-wings are starting to make their uh, peeling off towards the middle. I think the A-wings want to be in the asteroid fields here. They, they're they pretty certain that their maneuverability is going to uh, make it way better for them to be around those asteroids than it will be for their opponent. But not knowing much about the interceptors, uh, they could be just as agile. Yeah, they're definitely both agile, but Arvel, who's one of his A-wing pilots, being able to shoot while base to base, um, he's not afraid to get up in there. And you know, usually when you are swinging through asteroids like that, you can run into each other, and you can't shoot anymore. So that's gonna, that could potentially be a really big deal here. <laughs> All right, so the Falcon also took a move there, and it looks like it clipped, may have run into that A-wing. Uh, which is bound to happen, but this puts the uh, the fire spray and those interceptors in a very good position here. Um, we have a little bit of a collision going on early on on the rubble side. One of you look, the Falcon at this point, can it shoot anything? Well, it's got the 360 turret, so it can do whatever it wants. Um, now, as far as it's, I believe, does it have a heavy laser cannon on it? Or was that the... Uh, it doesn't. That was the slave, or the, the other one, the fire spray. So yeah, it's just uh, he's gonna have a 360 shot. So at least the turret is gonna pay off here for the Falcon. Yeah. And we're gonna take a shot at the Falcon with the tie interceptor. It's a range. The cra crazy two. part of these big ships is with the health and shields they have. You know, you you kind of either gotta commit to not dealing with them until the end or going all out against them at first, which leaves. So we have two hits and a crit on that interceptor, and one evade on the Falcon. So he's going to take two, right to the shields. Two off the shields. So at this point, I mean, you're kind of as a player committing to continuing to attack the Falcon, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Falcon's going to shoot back. <clears throat> it's range two here. Rolling three dice, gets... Looks like two hits. Two hits. And let's see if the inter oh yeah, two, two evades. So those little guys are going to be very hard to hit, especially the one with the uh, stealth device. Yeah, I mean, four agility is, the odds there are great uh, when it comes to being able to evade everything. But if you get hit, that goes away. So it does go away. You're playing the odds hard the entire game. All right, so the A-wing is going to take a shot, and it's through the asteroid. So that's not going to uh, no, <laughs> bode well for the odds three here. As well? So two Looks dice. Like, yeah, two dice. <clears throat> Only one hit there. Yeah, five and grains. No evades, but two focus icons, so he spins his focus to evade the blow. Five dice, no evades. That is crazy. It's crazy you can roll five dice on the defense with a little interceptor. Looks like we had a range one attack here. Range one A-wing on the interceptor, so they must not have been touching the... Yeah. Looks like one crit. One. Yeah. one crit. Yeah. And let's see if we got an evade. It looks like he yep. got plenty. <laughs> All right. So the first exchange probably goes to the uh, dark side here. Got a few shields off the Falcon. That's about all that happened. And we're waiting to see that fire spray get in on the action here. Looks like the other interceptor is now shooting the Falcon. And let's see, we have the Falcon at, how many agility is the Falcon generally uh, have? It's just the one agility, right? This, this, yeah, has one agility. All right. But it does have eight hull and five shields. Wow. Where's the Falcon at? It's not a very fast ship. No, it's not. Until you hit the hyperdrive. That's right. Made the Kessel run. and I remember that uh, discussion that was whether or not Parsecs was distance or time and... We've had all of this. <laughs> all right, so he's going to take that back, yeah. He's like, oh, wait, you're attacking the Falcon. So two hits against one of eight, right? Or is that an... I think it's just an eyeball. It's a focus. <laughs> an eyeball. So more shields peeled off that Falcon. So he's only got one shield token left. This is a huge, uh, huge early play for the dark side. That is a big swing. Those shields are really what make the Falcon tick here. And a good position, too. Good position on the far side of the board. It looks like Fire Spray is going to be able to really kind of get in there and have its way uh, with the Falcon. I don't think we're going to see any surprises as to where uh, the Fire Spray is going on this move. It's probably going to curve in, try to flank the Falcon. Now, what those Interceptors do is going to be a very 
different uh, decision here. Well, it's kind of interesting because, you know, the A-Wings have lower pilot skill than the Falcon. So the A-Wings are going to have to move first, which puts the... I mean, it's interesting. If you want the Falcon to play a factor here and not run into any of those asteroids that it mm -hmm. looks like it's going to run into, then you only have so many options on where you can actually put those A-Wings at this point. Yeah. And that Falcon, I mean, it's like, it's just a big... It's just a big thing. I mean, you're looking at that board. He could maybe wedge himself in those asteroids, but then there's nowhere to go. Yeah. Well, and what I said earlier, too, I mean, look how far up the Imperial player is at this point. Yeah, immediate press. So the, Re the Rebellion barely gets up the board, and all of a sudden, boom. Yeah, they are. Yeah, the Interceptors definitely claimed the asteroid field at this point. They're pretty well uh, shielded from attacks, probably going to get some extra agility from these A-Wing uh, fires. So it looks good. Looks good for them so far. We're seeing kind of the power of the Interceptors here, and let's see what the A-Wings can pull off. I know they're very fast, have a lot of potential. Honestly, dude, I don't know if I like the big ships. I'm very, I like going to the this is actually one of the most, I don't know, intense parts of the game, I guess. Uh, where you're actually putting down your movement dials at the same time and then revealing them one at a time. Uh, this is kind of where the money's made. Yep. This is it. And Eric is expressing how he doesn't know if he likes the big ships. <laughs> Having played this first <laughs> game, he's kind of looking at it thinking, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of places to go. Well, it's interesting, too, because the, the Imperial player sent his big ship around the outside. Right. Which is, in my, my opinion, a safe move because maneuvering is way easier. You can come up behind the opponent. Whereas Eric, you know, brought, as the Rebel player, kind of everything to the middle, um, which may be something you don't necessarily want to do. Yeah, for sure. That 360 turret is going to help him out, though, as well. Absolutely. So he can kind of afford to float around the middle and just hit whatever he's got to hit. Very clutch move there, just barely missing the interceptor, that A-wing. And he could, he's uh, saying he could boost uh, maybe to kind of a left turn here and position himself behind all those interceptors. He's going to take a target lock. He's going to lock onto the fire spray. So he's also kind of committing to taking out the, the big threat on the board. Or at least he's acting like it. At least he's acting like it, that's right. All right, so the Interceptor is going to weave under that A-wing or over, and boom, right there into position. It's worth noting how awesome these models look. <laughs> like, it, it looks like you're wa almost watching the movie here just because yeah. of the detail of the models. If we put it in, like, 20 times the speed, it would we'd have a battle on our hands. Add in some sound effects and we're there. Yeah. And he's deciding his action, going to do a barrel roll here. Nice. So uh, is he trying to get in the way of the Falcon here? What's that? Is he trying to get in the way of the Falcon? I think he's trying to get in the way of the Falcon. That's correct. I'm going to see if I can make you hit me. That's, it. That's what's really interesting about the barrel rolls and even the boosts because, you know, you get a move... And maybe your opponent's moved a couple of their ships already and, and make some decisions that could be really good for you. That uh, The A-Wing, too, could also run into that ship. We'll see what happens. That's a tight spot. So the A-Wing's coming in, but going to get stopped way short. <laughs> so he's going to have to stop short there. Really, let's see what the Falcon And does. the Falcon, I think, had a, uh, looked like a forward or maybe a curve one, but he's just going to slide up. Very well played. <clears throat> and the plan has, has been executed. And he's using his ability. It's a green maneuver, so he can put an action uh, on a ship at range one. Which there are a couple. Yeah, there's, there's plenty. I think he's choosing that A-wing that he's hitting, and he gave him a focus. So the Lando ability has paid off. Or at least it will hopefully pay off. Hopefully. Having a focus is always worth having. Having a focus is always worth having. Didn't Gandhi Good say Good advice. That? Yeah, I think that was Gandhi. Or was it Yoda? <clears throat> Fire spray coming in. This is just really great maneuvering from the, the slave yeah, Michael or the fire spray. Michael has his shot right here. This is the moment. And it's like, where's that falcon going to go besides... 
I mean, this is a chase. This is a classic movie scene right here. This is. And what's he going to take? The, the action that he takes with uh, the fire spray is going to be a big deal. Looks it's like just, he just took a focus. And you notice Kath's ability, when attacking, the defender receives one stress token if he cancels at least one critical result. So it's very hard to cancel these criticals when they do, and stressed out. It's going to make it even harder for the Falcon to, to play a role in this game. And the Interceptor. Just gonna hug up on uh, the fire spray there. No actions. That is a lot of ship and a very little amount of space. And you can see how unfamiliar everyone is with the, really the movement of the big ships is throwing everything off here. So range one and it goes to, uh, who is the highest pilot skill on this? Soon tier, I think? Yep, uh, but I think they're all He's attacking. Right, Who's attacking right now? Slave? Yeah. Slave is. Gonna spend that target lot. Looks like Soon Tier is the one who's hugged up on the Falcon, so he's not gonna get to do much of anything. <clears throat> Alright, so he used the focus and the target lock on that attack. Three hits and a crit. He's gonna take two hits and one critical. And he's going to use the Chewbacca card here, and we believe that this is a misplay of the Chewbacca card. Uh, we'll see how it how it plays out here. So he's essentially taking the two shields. You may immediately discard that card and recover one shield, then discard Chewbacca. So he was dealt three damage cards. So he can discard one of them, meaning he takes two damage and recovers a shield. And the question is whether or not he takes the hull damage or not. And so the way that it was played here is that he lost two shields and took a hull damage. So he essentially still took three damage. And his crit is the minor hull breach. So this is something that needs to be checked on for sure, um, how these all resolve in what order. Uh, and also the ability on a Kath, where the defender receives a stress if he cancels at least one critical, which he technically did not cancel the critical, is what what the board, what uh, Michael and Eric are agreeing to here at least. So there's a lot to, of course, the first run of new miniatures, new cards. There's a lot to sort out. Yeah, I mean, you're playing with completely new models, um, cards, upgrades, everything. So the Falcon's going to shoot back. <clears throat> looks like four hits. Looks like a really good roll is what that looks like. Out. Four hits, straight up. So four shields gone from, uh, from Fire Spray. That's all the shield tokens. Boom. Now, if you were a betting man, <laughs> now that they're both shieldless, the Falcon and the Slave, obviously uh, the Fire Spray has a higher agility. Which one do you think is going to be the first one to go down? Oh, well, I'm not a betting man. Uh, Arv Arvel uh, is taking it to the Fire Spray here. Looks like one damage goes through. Well, now I'll make a bet. It's only one damage. Looks like one and one. I mean, if the Falcon now the has a more hull, but it's also going to be a way easier target. Because it only gets one. So we have the Interceptor firing back. And that's evaded with focus. Yeah, I mean, the Falcon only has one agility, so... <laughs> Even though it's got more hull, it's it's almost equal at this point. I have a feeling that both these big ships are going to go down because you see that big ship on the other side of the board, and all you want to do is kill it. Uh, that seems to be a priority number one uh, whenever uh, these games take off. Well, that, I mean, that was obviously the priority from the start. Win or lose, if you at least took out their big ship, after the game's over, you can say, I took down the slave, <laughs> or I took down the falcon. 
Uh, which it's worth a lot. I, that's something. <laughs> worth a lot. <laughs> and now they're plotting the moves. Another now, where's the Falcon gonna go? See, my instinct at this point with a ship like that is just to get it out of dodge. Just go as far forward as you can and try to sweep around to the right, and make a, a kind of a new front out there. Get your A wings out. Go to the Empire side of the board and hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, I, I would You've be got going three sixty turret. I mean, your back doesn't matter at this point. I'd be going forward with the Falcon. I'd also be swinging my uh, the A wing on the other side of the Falcon right now, in front of the Slave One. Um, that way, he can only get so close. Right. Uh, Looks like ooh, okay. We're doing the old three in turn. This is a kind of an A wing special. Gets a stress token, so no actions. I'm uh, I'm really curious to see what he does with the other A wing. I think that's the that's the biggest move here. It'll be a deciding factor. All right, so our interceptor is going to do what looks to be a five with the old U-turn on there. That is an inch away from being gone. And that is, that's some pretty high stakes <laughs> gambling right there. <laughs> yeah, because if any part of that base goes off the board, that ship is... See ya. Into the black hole it goes. <clears throat> Here comes the A-wing. All right, so the six pilot skill on that Arvel. <clears throat> and he's doing as, uh, as you were saying. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would have... I don't know, it's interesting to see. Because if Slave 1 goes far enough, he'll get over it. And Arvel's particularly interesting simply because he can hit stuff that he's base-to-base -base with. Interesting move. Yeah, all right, so he's actually going to go... Look, he moved. ...around the corner there. And he is going to get... What the slave, I guess, what the fire spray does now is super critical. You see, there's a big fire spray sized hole that he could fit into. It's just a matter of predicting that move. Interceptor's still going to get a shot. The Falcon has a pretty clean uh, angle on that interceptor as well, so he could maybe take out some of these pesky uh, mosquitoes flying around. That's that's a pretty solid maneuver because there's very little space that slave can fit in. We'll see what he does. Wow. He gets there, but at the same time, this is perfect for the Falcon. Absolutely perfect. He's on an asteroid, right? I didn't catch it, but most importantly, he's outside of his firing arc. Falcon's got him, but slave can only fire front and back. <laughs> and he's on the asteroid. No actions. He'll have to potentially take a damage. And uh, those are pretty hard to avoid with these big ships. It's a very good move with that interceptor. Nice, yeah. So the interceptors are on the Falcon here, without a doubt. <clears throat> and I believe it looks like... So it would be... We can't quite get an angle. I think he said that he was just short of that asteroid. Looks like he's on it, though. It looks like he's right on it. <laughs> Range 1 Interceptor. The soon tier fell. Pilot skill 9. And it's range 1. And he's he's got 3 attack. Or range 2. We're not sure. Still deciding. Looks like he's not getting the extra. He's at range one, though. They're saying it's range two. He said he was just short. Ah. He's going to use his focus. It's going to be two hits and a critical. Big roll here. No evades. He uses his evade token that the Millennium Falcon grants. So he takes a hit and a critical. This is just getting torn up. And the critical is double damage. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh man, that's bad. He's he's four away from a dead falcon here. That is a big deal because we are talking about fifty points of models in one one model. Mm. And slave, ugh. slave is out of this round. That's gonna be a big deal. 
Falcon could have been gone had now, a slave if, gotten the shot. If you're the Falcon, are you worried about the slave now or the other interceptor that hasn't attacked you? I don't know. You know. Looks like he's worried about the slave. Falcon rolls two crits on that roll. Against one evade. So he takes one crit there on the slave. Damage cockpit. Treat your pilot skill as zero. That's a that's a huge crit for uh, for Cast Scarlet there. <coughs> Those aimings are gonna have easy pickings on that guy. Six A wing can't attack, and the A wing over here is out of position but can still get one at range three. <coughs> Rolls two. Gets one hit. And perfectly evaded, evade. so no problem at all. These interceptors are just lined up perfectly to, to take it to the Falcon here. So now it looks like we have the Avenger squadron pilot at range, at range two. two versus one evade. It's going to be a big roll here. Two hits and one evade, so only one hit. Okay. That was close. So five hull damage already on the Falcon. You got any bets now? Mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, the slave only needs to take four, right? The Falcon's down to three and the slave's at four, uh, but the Falcon only has one agility, whereas the slave has two. Now, you can imagine putting upgrades on these kinds of ships that recover their shields or repair their hulls, all kinds of stuff. So these could be long-term, uh, once we actually get a chance to build our fleets, the way that we want them. These could be very interesting ships. You get a lot more long-term use out of them, and I think people will learn to use them quite a bit more effectively as we go. So the two interceptors are in perfect position on the Falcon. Where are they going to go next? The A-wings are kind of a little bit awkward right here. Uh, not a lot of good spots for him, but it's made up for by the fact that Slave is on that asteroid. Not a whole lot of options for him either, so the Falcon's move is going to be a big deal. There's only so much he can do. What do you think? Do you think the slave is going to take a, a bank right here and try to not hit that asteroid in front of it? Or is it going to squeeze through the top left up there? It strikes me. I mean, you Michael know, strikes me the type of player that would try to fit through that asteroid. You know, the Falcon's probably going to loop around up and to the right. Right. I mean, it just. If you feel like that's where it's going to go. So does the slave try to meet him head on, or does the slave go back home? Yeah, good question. Funny thing is, you know, the Falcon feels so uh, kind of slow, you know, it feels so, compared to these interceptors and A-wings, it's just kind of, you know, going along as almost like a capital ship here. And in the world of X-Wing, it is pretty much a capital ship. It's huge. <clears throat> Like if you go through, if you're on it and you go that was a continue through it, it's, it's like getting off it, right? Just grinding up against it. <laughs> and the discussion right now is whether or not Slave uh, did roll for the damage on the asteroid or not. I'm trying to sort that out. I don't believe that he I don't did. Remember it. We went back and forth. Wait, he stayed on it for the same turn? That's what we're asking. If he stays on it, will he roll oh, he for damage? Like, if I were, if yeah, I were, and the discussion happening now is, and like turn and still be on it at the end. Does he roll whenever he leaves the asteroid, or does he roll whenever he first touches it? And I played plenty of X. I mean, we always play where you roll the damage the second you contact the asteroid. I don't have the rulebook in front of me, so I won't make a definitive statement on that. I'm about a hundred percent sure that's how it works. <laughs> It's still like in your windshield. <laughs> but I'm not a bad man. And, and hope you don't get the other one. <laughs> so, right now, you know what you've got to think is why doesn't Slave 1 have some sweet minds? Why would they. Why would Fantasy Flight give us the coolest mechanic yet? And then not let it be used in the Custom Run event. So now these two force, these two uh, forces, I guess they were pre-built. Is that yes, what you said? Yes, pre-built completely. <laughs> I guess the the newness of the mines could have been a little bit too much, considering all of the new stuff that was happening. But there's nothing cooler than dropping a little mine out the back of Slave One here and jetting off into the asteroid field. I agree. <laughs> even <laughs> even if there's an interceptor in the way, hey, what what does it matter? 
Well, Looks like maneuvers are set. All right, so slave one at zero pilot skill. Go home. He's gonna try to weave in there. That is not. Does not look good. I don't know. That looks solid to me. That is close. Woo. Very nice. Yep. And now he can shoot directly behind him. He can. So that's an interesting. I mean, normally if you do that with a ship, he's not going to be attacking, but this could be perfect. He can take the focus. And the A-Wing over here is going to take a... It's an Avenger Squadron pilot. It's going to go four straight ahead. It's going to hit the boosters there. And then for his action, let's see what he's going to go with. Would you consider a boost here? I always consider a boost. I'm the I, dude who's always boosting. I kind of like the position because the Slave 1 can't target it. Um, or even, yeah, if it, true. even if it may be able to, it's going to be straight through that asteroid. To me, my A-Wings need to be taking care of these interceptors. Um... Or the Falcon needs to be taken care of him. The a wings need to be pumping up Slave 1. But those Interceptors are really what's doing the damage here to the Falcon. You can't shake him. You can't outposition them. You've got to kill him. Looks like a solid move there. Yeah, the Falcon can only go so many places, so uh, saddling up right next to it is a good option. And we're going with a, the other A-Wing. Arvel at six. It looks like he's getting in much better positioning now. The A-Wings, yeah, are back in the field here. He knows those interceptors are probably going to be tailing the Falcon, so this is a good good spot to be in. He did have to use a, a good bit of, uh, you know, U-turns, basically. Whenever you're doing that, you're, you're taking a lot of stress tokens. And look at this. He just hit everybody. Have you not hit someone yet? One turn, I didn't hit someone. The old uh, turn right into that interceptor. You would never which is, expect that. Which is just what he wanted, actually. That, that's going to take away the interceptor's attack on the Falcon. He still has an attack on the other interceptor. Unless that interceptor comes in and contacts him as well, which is actually what he would want here, just to fly above these interceptors. But uh, the Slave One does have a clean shot. Straight at the Falcon. Straight at it. And we've yet to see any impressive weaponry from these ships. Heavy laser cannon hasn't been used. Uh, we haven't seen any homing missiles. That is a close maneuver right there. I, I wonder if they're touching. I, commentary says no. Falcon has a little bit of play in the base so that it can take care of these situations. Gets a focus. So he did not... You look at that tiny sliver there. That is Didn't crazy. contact. He's going to take a shot coming in. I wonder if that's at range one. <laughs> I have a feeling it is. All right, so everything is moved here. So nine at range one. Soon tier fell. Only four dice. This could be a big deal. All he needs is three. Ooh. Three crits and one hit. That is See you later. What an epic shot. Soon Tier fell coming in three crits and a hit. What are the odds of that? That is something Soon Tier would do. <laughs> so now this is looking rough for the Rebels. You've got two fully stocked A Wings versus fully stocked Interceptors and a Slave One you still have to deal with. And that you can't hit this turn. And you can't hit him this turn. He can't do anything to you, though. That's a good thing. So we're going to hope here for the Rebel side that those A-Wings are going to be able to take out the Interceptor. So now, how was the decision made on who would play Rebels and who would play Imperial? Um, I believe there was, if there was a consensus, if one wanted one and one wanted the other, that was one way to do it. And then also the, uh, I guess the highest strength of schedule and all that. I think both of these players chose what they wanted to play. I believe that Eric wanted to play Rebels. Ooh, that's exactly what you want. A crit on that Interceptor. Direct hit, two damage. Incredible. That is definitely the turnaround that we're looking for here on the Rebel side. This could take that Interceptor out. This could be it. That was a huge shot by that A-Wing. That was a Hail Mary. <clears throat> Range two. My focus. Uses focus, a crit, and a hit. Oh, another crit. 
And so he takes a crit. Boom. He's gone, right? I would imagine. I said please. And he's gone. Wow. This is going to be close. So now we're perfectly even here on a point point by point basis. Um, 50 technically for the rebels and 50 for the imperials. Just based on, uh, we basically used a calculation, however much damage a, a ship is missing that's subtracted from its points based on the, the multiplier of how much that ship's worth. So we're at basically 50% on both we're sides. Basically both sides are at 50% strength right now. Now, if the slave goes completely down, that's going to be a huge, huge swing in the rebels' favor. So right now, I think some tricky maneuvering and some heads up uh, playing here is going to be critical uh, to make sure the fire spray stays out of trouble and also gets to do some damage. Now, Kath hasn't used that heavy laser cannon. Not at all. But its real strength is that it is the, a nice range 2 or 3 and rolling 4 dice. Can't crit, but... Hey, stay as far away from those A-wings as you possibly can and just laser them up. Which, that's that's going to be a feat in and of itself, because <clears throat> those things can can get after you, especially Absolutely. with those boost actions. <clears throat> now, here's the thing about uh, Kath, is got the Mercenary Copilot and the Heavy Laser Cannon. So, you kind of got to ask yourself which one happens first. The Heavy Laser Cannon, you change all your crits to hits, and the Copilot says when attacking at range 2, or range 3, uh, you may change one of your normal results to a crit. So could the heavy laser cannon do maybe three or four hits, and then the mercenary change one of those to a crit? I don't know. I'm not sure if they can be used in conjunction like that, but... These are the questions that Wave 2 offers us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that seems like a good plan, rolling four dice at range three and it, flipping one of them over to a uh, It almost crit. seems like that's what Fantasy Flight planned when they put that pairing together. We'll see if they do it. All right, so Slave's actually going to choose to turn around here. He's going to take a stress. Where do you think old Soontir over there is going to go? Well, if I were Soontir, I would get as far away as possible. <laughs> he doesn't want to be hit, that's for sure. But see, the A-Wings are still honing in on Slave. Now, this is a, an exchange. I don't think the A-Wing wants. Um, this is essentially a clean shot both ways. And you got to think the fire spray is going to win this encounter. Michael's saying that he did not think that uh, Eric would go after his fire spray like that, which I think is fair to say. Um, and that's going to be a tough shot. So he's going to go ahead and take the uh, target lock. Now he's he's got a target lock with both ships on the slave. Right. Which could be a big deal, especially considering the slave only gets two dice and has no shields left. And you gotta think, soon Tears is still sitting over here with a uh, self device, nine pilot skill, and look at him zoom around those asteroids. <laughs> so, this is the face off we've been waiting for. And as I remember, yeah, Arvel still has those homing missiles. Requires a target lock, range two or three, rolls four dice. And you can't spend evade tokens. And you can't evade during the attack, that's right. And it's just a matter of, does he, you know, even if they don't have an evade up, do you use those missiles just to get a good four dice shot? I'd say it's a pretty decent plan. Especially when you fire out like this, because they, they'll probably only get closer at this point. And the dice, so all the moves have taken place. We have the interceptor has curved around the outside of the field, around that asteroid. We have A-wings, both with target locks, and he's going to use the homing missiles. So Arvel taking the first shot. Kath at a zero pilot skill is having a huge impact on this game. He could clear uh, Kath out before he gets a chance to respond here. So four dice. And he's going to use his target lock. And looks like two hits. Homing missiles come through. Only two hits left. This is a huge roll on the A-Wing here. This is With huge. a focus. Two crits. Oh my god. Two crits versus two evades here. This is a big roll. This is it. 
Or three of eights, excuse me, stealth device. Or no, no, no. That may not have, maybe that was range three. Fully evaded. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? He's probably sweating right now. Yeah, that's close. All right, the heavy laser cannon is coming into play here. So he's going to need to roll four. This could be a dead A-wing. Oh, easily. This is the stuff dead A-wings are made of. But it does have two. These A-wings are surprisingly uh, versatile. Absolutely. So it looks like just one hit. Three evades. I see a fist bump there. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Four evades. It's it's insane. Four, four agility, two shields, and two hull. Now this A-wing that's attacking the slate or fire spray has a target lock still. Right. And what's gonna happen? Looks like we're going back to movement. That was a that was a nice exchange, really in the favor of the rebels here. Got two damage on the fire spray, but that's about it. And I'm assuming the interceptor is going to weave through here. This is where you know I could see a slave uh, or fire spray having a nice a nice little mine here to to maybe turn around and drop. Pilot skill of zero goes first. That crit is still coming into play, pretty heavy. He's going one up. All right, saying bring it on. Now this actually works in Arvel's favor since he can attack when base to base. We're gonna see if Eric took advantage of that and expected this move. There's not too terribly much the slave could do Absolutely. outside of that. that. That's unfortunately the Avenger squadron pilot. If only that was Arvel. <laughs> and he does the same, he's approaching as well. All right, so look at the showdown. He's going to take the focus. Focus instead of the uh, instead of the target lock. He may actually be going on the defensive here. And the interceptor comes in, and it looks like going to have a, a shot at that uh, A wing. So starting with soon tier. And we've got three hits versus three evades, or three. So he's going to use his focus. Two hits, and it looks like no evades. So he takes two to his shields. That's a big. That's, that's a big, big one. Thing. Exposing that A wing. Range one gets one hit on that A wing. See if slave can evade it. No evades. So Slave takes one more damage. Wow. One health left. Look at the, the percentages at the bottom at this point. Yep. Slave will roll four. Now, if I run into him, can he still attack me? No. Can Slave attack you? Okay. I didn't think so. Four on your six. So now Arvel is the target of Slave's uh, retaliation here. Range one. Three hits. Looks like one evade and one two focus. evades. He focused, so only one shield gone. So Arvel uh, lives to to save the day again. And I believe we're going back to movement here. Both players evaluating the board, taking a look. It's getting a lot easier, it seems like, to maneuver these ships. So both the A-wings here in Slave's front arc easily. Um, the tie interceptor coming around the side. How this all ends up is going to be a, a huge factor. Where that interceptor goes, you really have to predict the moves here. I think Slave may be doing a big old U-turn here. What's that maneuver called, do you remember? I know I've seen it. Everyone will be furious that I'm not using that terminology. The appropriate wording. Yeah, it's like a... Uh, it's not a Talon 
roll or something, but it's something like that. Something fancy. So looks like the Amy's going to get some distance and then turn around to make another pass. Now, where's that interceptor going to go? The interceptor is a big player, and with that boost action, it can go where it wants to go. Absolutely. All right, aiming, doing the same thing. So we have some very cinematic zooming in and out. What is the interceptor going to go? Man, if he can get a side shot here, he could potentially take out that A-wing. The A-wings are hurting. It's uh, This is really anybody's game at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And Michael takes the interceptor, and look at that. Tell me he's not turning around. <laughs> That'd be awful. Excellent. So now, do you barrel roll here? He focuses. He's going to focus. He well, he's going to get got, a shoot first, too. He's got range one, shoot first. And he's got four dice coming in. Huge roll. Looks like he gets several hits. He's going to focus. Looks like four hits, or three hits, one crit. And he takes one hit and one crit. So one of the shields and the console fire. Start of each combat phase, roll one attack die, suffer a damage if you roll a hit. That could get him next turn. That could easily take Arvel out at the start of the next turn. And what are the A-Wings going to do? They really have no choice but to just shoot back at Soon Tier here. And that's what's going to happen. At the start of the combat phase, I need to roll one attack die. See if I suffer damage. We've already started coming back. And uh, the console fire doesn't take effect yet. So we have three dice. Range one, one hit. And that self device gives him one evade. Seen tier fell, cloaking in and out of this battle. Range two A wing, only gonna roll two dice. No hits. That is a big turn for the Imperial. So soon tier is hunting these A wings down. <clears throat> Time for the old. can't do anything. Oh, he can. Range three. <laughs> he absolutely can. He got it. I thought he was out of range. One hit, and three of aid, so nothing. <clears throat> now, a lot of times games at the end like this, when you're just both barely on the cusp and it's close, can be like a fist fight, man. It's like you're just so close, and uh, all they need to do is roll evades to not take the damage, and it, it's hilarious what can happen at the end of games like this. That's right. And the moves roll in quickly. Everyone knows the pace of the game right now. <clears throat> Just want to get the moves out of the way and hopefully destroy their enemies. Slave 1 at zero pilot skill. Going to do the classic one forward. I have no other moves to make that are even close to safe. <clears throat> and there he locks it in. And he's going to take the focus. These are big maneuvers. And where are the aiming is going to go here? A wings straight up, and the A wing will shoot first. Absolutely, if it's, it's going to be a huge, huge deal here. Unless Soon Tier can pluck one of those A wings off, there's a decent chance that Fire Spray is going down. And then Arvel's going to go five straight up, and he's going to run into his own ship. That's all right. It's not that bad. And we'll, we'll see where Soon Tier goes. The fact that he's not getting an action for running into his own ship, that's an issue. The odds go down pretty dramatically without a focus or a target lock. He will get a what probably will be a range one shot at the slave, though, with both Absolutely. ships. And Soon Tier peels in pretty perfectly here. No contact would have been better, but at least he's going to get a range one shot at that opening A wing. And let's see what he does. And that's the A-Wing with the focus on it and the target lock. Absolutely. So that's the one you want to deal with. So soon tier fell. Can you shoot him down? When can I do this? When I receive a stress token? Just sign one focus on my ship? And soon tier fell. Looking at his upgrade, um, his self-device. 
I believe he also has the uh, the overkill or daredevil, yeah. Three hits. <laughs> and we're focusing to evade. So you're gonna take one hit there. So close. So do we have two A wings with one health left? We have two A wings with one health left. That is all the rebels have. We have a fire spray with one health left. Console fire, no hit. Okay. That could have been a big deal. Man, just holding on. Goodbye. See if you can get the job done. Do Two hits Guys. on fire spray. <laughs> Thank you. One evade, and he's down. Fire That'll spray be is it. off the board. Oof. So soon tier fell on the back of two just okay. held together by duct tape A wings at this well, point. You've got the one with the critical damage where you have to roll at the start Console of every turn. Fires. Yep. Uh, this is a case where you don't want to be hitting an asteroid for sure. No, no, the <laughs> asteroids are off limits right now. Soon tier still has full three hull, um, still has daredevil, and he still has stealth device. Still has stealth device, which is the biggest deal of all because these A wings are rolling two dice, three dice with their one, but they're having to roll against a four agility every time. Insane. And now we're gonna get to the maybe the most interesting move. <laughs> Where do the A-Wings go here? It's curious It's only going to get worse the longer that they don't engage. Especially with that tier. critical hit Yeah, that's just waiting to kill you. But it's tough because, I mean, you, you have to turn around too. So you're not going to get your focus. You're not going to get your target lock. Um, and if you don't turn around, the Interceptor is just going to pick you apart. Uh, and we're going to take a look at, at these movements. <clears throat> And nobody, everyone is really thinking out uh, what should happen here on their side. You've, I think you've, it's now or never to get that and to get soon to your fell out of the game. He's gonna get the first shot, which is just gonna be a huge deal here. Michael's just gotta make sure that that interceptor gets some kind of shot here. So the A-Wing does a three with the U-turn there. And the A-Wing is going to turn to the left. Going to try to evade here. Try to get away. He can't go both directions. And he's going to take an action. Yeah, I'm going to use his action. Thank you. I forgot about that. What action do you take here? He's going to use his action to uh, get rid of that. Uh, looks like a console fire. You can use an action to repair your console. Good to know. Yeah. It delays the turn. So, okay, here's the showdown that Michael, I think, ultimately wanted. Um, Soon Tier is going to get the first shot on this A Wing. All shields are down. It's a range one shot. With an action. With focus. Pretty sure I'm within range one. Probably should have taken the. Uh, probably should have taken the uh, target lock, or uh, Soon Tier can't take it, so that's why he didn't. Two hits, one of eight. There he goes. Exactly what Michael wanted here. <laughs> Boom. Now it's a one-on-one -on -one showdown, one -on -one. and this Soon Tier is looking good. Soon Tier at nine pilot skill with a stealth device, three hull. Versus one damage left, Arvel. He's got four agility here. It's just unbelievable. Very tough to hit. Um, so imagine we're going to see some, some frisky maneuvering. So it's worth noting for the future, if you're playing against someone with stealth device, you may want to hit them earlier Try to hit rather him. than later. Try to hit him. The focus on uh, on the fire spray really allowed Soon Tier to kind of run around the board, and he was actually one of the bigger threats on the board, maybe even bigger than uh, than the slave. Ultimately, nine pilot skills a big deal. He's got a full suite of actions, very maneuverable. I mean, on a ship by ship basis, he's only 11 points less than the fire spray. That's true. May not have looked like the smartest move. And here goes the interceptor, the old U turn. And we'll see where the A wing goes here. Didn't the A wing already go? He did, that's right. 
So he just looped around a little bit. And now the uh, asteroid in between them. So the interceptor needs a damage to go through. One damage. And two evades. So he's going to shoot back. Two, and he's rolling five agility because of that asteroid. That is crazy. <laughs> and it looks like no hits. Didn't even need it. Didn't need it. So now it's the dance. Does the A-Wing dance to the left of that middle asteroid in between that gap, or does it go to the right? Does it try to make a quick one turn and stay behind that asteroid and try to keep safe? I almost feel like if I'm behind at this point, which I feel like the Rebel player is, I'm going to be dancing. I think it's a dancey. If, if you're dancing through the asteroids... There's a chance that Suntir can make a mistake. You're hoping that he runs into one. <laughs> There's a chance. And here we go. Here's the dials. <laughs> we'll see what he does. Oh, uh, looks like he's going for the dance. Yep. Trying to keep that asteroid between. Oh, look at that. Uh, <laughs> what does he do next turn, though? <laughs> oh, man. That is an asteroid dilemma. Focus. And this is trouble. Wow. Oh, snap. But my guy like, hasn't been touched. I hope I can blow you up right here. And look at this. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is a gamble. Soon tier. I'm hoping it will pay off. You got that is unexpected. Of, uh, that green. Now the uh, rebel player has a target lock and a focus here. This this is a huge shot. This could be everything. He really needs to get a hit. And he's taking the evade. Ah, My, shoot. Michael knows. That is rough. And it's it is range two here. It's not as good as uh, you might have thought. Hit and a crit. Hit and a crit. Two and two evades. Get out of here. It's just impossible to hit the swing tier at this point. So now, if this match ends from an asteroid, <laughs> this will be epic. <laughs> that is true. Okay. Or anticlimactic. Whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah, for sure. It's really interesting, too, because the longer the game goes and less maneuver dials you have the pace of the game naturally snowballs. Right. So now it's just a sprint, really. Who can finish move, it off? Move, attack, move, attack. And the A-Wing is definitely at the disadvantage of this asteroid here. That is crazy. Now, I expect the uh, <coughs> soon tier to maybe do a basically a turnaround. Um, but we'll see. He may just run through the asteroids and keep keep his he cover. Might, so could, Yeah, he could do a curve right here. Just It's working so far. Here we go. And we have the two <laughs> curve. That is on that asteroid. Did he make it? Did he hit no, I don't think he hit him. Oh, the, the template goes yeah, on the for asteroid sure. for sure. But I have to roll for damage. He's going to roll for damage? I couldn't watch, so. <laughs> and all reports say he's staying alive. He's staying alive. He made it through. Oh. And we've got the U-turn here. Hello. Now, he put a focus down. <laughs> yeah, I had he did. On a turn when he went through an asteroid. We can only not focus if you land, if you stop on an asteroid. If you go through, you just take the damage. Ah, yes. That's the way I've uh, been playing it, at least. Them's the rules. <laughs> Them's the rules. It's just in the rule book. All right, A-Wing and the Interceptor. Soon Tier getting the first shot. Big roll. Two hits. And oh two evades. <laughs> wow. Wow. Two to your five. All right. Two dice to soon tiers five. <laughs> That's not happening. Oh, oh. And it's all evades. <laughs> that is rough, man. This is just a rough, rough position to be in. You can only take that as an action, but it took a because now you've got a soon tier who's probably going to be range one with an action. Yeah, I think soon tier just does the old, I don't know. If you just do the one forward. Well, I mean, he can he can barrel roll. He can boost. So something simple, straight, like just a short little one to the left a little a lot bit. Of possibilities. Then he can kind of get where he needs to go. We'll see what the A-Wing does. I mean, I feel like the A-Wing has to do like a, a five turnaround. Um, just to, to hopefully not be in range of soon tier, but we'll see what happens. That's where that nine pilot skill really starts to make a lot of sense as to why that's so good. 
When you have barrel roll and boost in the equation, your ability to react. There's two things I'm expecting you to do since you can't. Either just can go straight. Here we go. Or turn to left. And here we go here. To two with the U turn. So he's expecting Suntir to come forward. Maybe he's expecting a U turn from Suntir. Going straight. And he goes straight. This works into the plan here. Are you sure? Yeah. That puts him outside of. That puts you outside of his. And I think it looks like Suntir is in that A Wings. I think the A Wing is in on the interception. Yeah, the A Wing has a. Oh, this is a big deal. So Sintir takes the evade again. It's still going to be nearly impossible to hit this guy. How do you, I mean, even at range one, how do you hit? He's got four. It's not good odds. It's crazy. I, I, initially, when I saw the, these cards, I was concerned with the, the lack of shields from the TIE Interceptors, but those stealth devices, man. Two hits from the A-Wing and two evades from Sintir. So that's a classic, uh, it's what we're seeing with the stealth device. And one crit. That's what we need. So the aiming's back in. And he's going straight forward, right towards another asteroid. Now, can I boost? If I, what if I boost through an asteroid? If you don't land on it, I think it's allowed, but you still have to roll the tank. Roll. If you boost through an asteroid, yeah, still gotta roll it. If you boost to the other side of the you don't roll That is rough. It's rough. Look at that, right in front. I'm just wondering, if I'm the, the rebel player, how do you... How do you even approach this tactically? I don't know. That's I mean, kind of the problem. Soon tier may be hitting an asteroid here. I feel like I'm just weaving and hoping he goes through asteroids. Yeah, I mean, your advantage, you have to take advantage of Arvel, which is you can be in contact with the enemy ship and still take a shot, whereas your opponent can't. So I think here you've got to just try to get exactly where they are every single turn. And we have everyone a little too smart for their own good. Again, we're at a point where an asteroid could end the game. Yes. Well, Lucky you put out that uh, console fire. I believe it was on an article earlier. And oh yeah, Michael tried to target lock here, but then he can't because he has a tie interceptor. Tie fighters don't target lock. <laughs> Not these tie technology. Fighters. So we got some more moves coming on the line. So the tale of this game has been, you know, essentially the big ships went down early, and now soon tier, which is like the elite of the small ships, um, is running the table, or has been. And we've gotten to this point. We're now with a stealth device, four agility. Uh, the odds are heavily, I'd say 95% in soon tier's favor here. And here we go, over the asteroid. Another potential uh, fatal maneuver here. And he's gone. Wow. Oh, the castle run ends with an Another asteroid. Maneuver. That's excellent. So thanks for watching, guys. This is, uh, again, the X-Wing <laughs> castle run. This is our final match, the Covenant Store in Tulsa. Um, if you guys want to see more, we will have some interviews from both of these players up on YouTube quite soon. And uh, Michael's taking a look at his final move here, so what it would be. So that would have been a, a nasty exchange at the end anyway. They're kind of playing it off to, uh, to see what would have happened had the asteroid not happened. Soon Tier would get three hits and... I would use my focus, so I did There would have been some evades. 
It's the old, it's the old, let's find out how things really would have ended. But in reality, <laughs> you hit an asteroid, and uh, that's the way it happens. And I mean, he did go through two asteroids. He even took the, the critical role where he didn't die to that. So third time's the charm, I guess, in this case. Absolutely. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. This is the, uh, the, the beauty of X-Wing. Um, we, we're only getting started with this game. The Wave 2 ships are almost here and in our hands, meaning not only that we get the new ships, but all the upgrades that we can put not only on the new ships, but on the old ships as well. So it's an exciting time for this game. It's an exciting time for Star Wars. And uh, what more can you say? Absolutely. And, you know, hopefully they do a similar event for Wave 3, whatever Absolutely. that might hold for us. And if they do... We'll be back with another video, uh, and in the meantime, we'll be doing, obviously, more videos. And if you guys need anything X-Wing related, check us out at TeamCovenant.com. And if you're looking for uh, X-Wing Wave 2, we do have it for pre-order on the site, TeamCovenant.com slash store. You can find it there. And not only will you be getting some sweet ships, you'll be supporting our efforts and what we're doing here with the videos and the podcasts and everything else we're trying to do to really make life as an X-Wing player better than it uh, otherwise would be. So thanks a lot for watching uh, and take care.